And I want to ask you about the the Dobbs decision. And I, mm. I remember when it came down, I listened to Betsy Stevenson and a professor from the medical school, and they were talking about Professor Stevenson was talking about the implications of the job of the Dobbs decision from an economic perspective in terms of women's economic mobility prospects and what this might mean for that. And then the um, the professor from the medical school was talking about some of the unintended consequences as it relates to providing healthcare services for. Uh, women, tr how doctors are trained, can we train doctors mm -hmm. um, uh, ar around um, abortion access at the medical school, and all of the things that the institution now had to think about mm -hmm. um, in the Dobbs decision. This was before the midterms when Michigan was trying to figure out if um, where our state would go. And you were just talking about the kind of unintended consequences or perhaps intended consequences on the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that the courts are not necessarily set up to implement a law like Texas's law, for example, where someone can be prosecuted um, for um, for seeking an abortion, people mm -hmm. can turn other people in, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. And it just raises such an interesting question for me in terms of in these hotbed policy issues where the issue itself is a really important co policy conversation, but then there are these ripple effects right. that also need to be talked about in terms of its impact potentially on institutions like the criminal justice system, the legal system, I mean, the education system, the healthcare system, et cetera, labor markets. And I, I wonder if you can just talk about um, how a debate on, say, abortion access intersects with criminal justice in a way that people might be surprised to think about. Well, I hear, I think the most surprising thing stems from, you know, when you're a policymaker, not only do you have to think about the policy, you also have to think of the abuse of that policy. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And so say for example, um, you know, is it is it going to be okay if one day someone walks out of the house and they're pregnant and their neighbor sees them, mm -hmm. and then a week later they walk out of their house and they're not pregnant? Mm -hmm. You know, can that neighbor call, that neighbor then calls mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. some very personal circumstances are delved into mm -hmm. um, because, okay, maybe that woman did have an abortion and maybe that is illegal where she was, or maybe she had a miscarriage mm -hmm. and now you are adding insult to injury. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is it going to be, you know, what we call discovery, the exchange mm -hmm. of evidence, is it going to be discoverable, like how a lot of women now use apps to keep track of their menstruation cycles, mm -hmm. you know, menstrual cycles rather. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is that fair game in discovery? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then when you think about doctors, typically, especially in a hospital setting, they're being advised by lawyers whose job is a lot of risk management, mm -hmm. right? And so, and then you also have the conflict between legal terminology and medical terminology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the case of, uh, you know, statutes that prosecute doctors, mm -hmm. You know, what is that doctor going, you know, and we're also thinking about things that happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what is that doctor going to do and how is that doctor going to be advised mm -hmm. if, say, for example, the standard is um, abortion is illegal except to save the life of the mother. Mm -hmm. You know, so as policymakers and legislators, you know, that line has to be drawn. Mm -hmm. But until then, you know, the hospital lawyers have a kind of a risk management view. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to say, you do nothing mm -hmm. until it is very clear, mm -hmm. unequivocally, that the mother's life is at risk. Mm. Um, or, um, you know, if there is no um, exceptions, if the law is that there are no exceptions mm -hmm. for rape or incest or mm -hmm. life of the mother or whatever, you know, how is that conflicting with um, a, a, what doctors all promise to do, which is do no harm. Mm -hmm. um, and does that lead to lawsuits against, like even civil lawsuits against doctors? Mm. 
You know, I mean, because my class was so awesomely set up, <laughs> uh, you know, what we did with Dobbs was, you know, of course, we talked about the opinion. Mm -hmm. We talked about the fact that it was sent to the states. Mm -hmm. We even talked about how, when that happened, you know, you have two states, Michigan and Ohio, mm -hmm. you know, that went two very different ways mm -hmm. on the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and so then what we did when we were talking about policy implications, we got policy implications from the point of view of Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. and we got policy implications from the point of view of Ohio Right to Life. Mm -hmm. And you brought both conversations into the classroom. In the same week. In the same week. And <laughs> yes. then guest speakers, right? Guest speakers, from, yeah. From, from, from Planned both. Parenthood and Ohio Right to Life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it was very interesting and it was very intentional um, for my students to say, to see this one case and like just how wide that ripple went. Mm -hmm. And then depending on which side you're on, what you think the policy implications are. Mm -hmm. Because um, when we talked to the person from Planned Parenthood, the policy implications were more of how do we get a referendum mm -hmm. um, on the ballot? Um, how do we help employers who want to help their employees get to mm -hmm. Michigan or wherever mm -hmm. else? Mm -hmm. um, versus when we talked to Ohio Right to Life, those policy implications were more of how do we improve the foster care system? Mm. Uh, and, and it was, they went two totally different routes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also note though, and, and I think the people in my class would agree, it was very obvious that those policy makers were very rarely in the same room together. Mm. They, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if that ever really happened. Mm. Interesting. Interesting.